Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a riff off of a previous video that I made about using Fusion 360. So most recently I've been using Fusion 360 along with my CNC here to help me complete workflows for projects in the garage a little bit faster and with a little less error. Specifically, I've been using my CNC to do the juice grooves on my cutting board. What I have found through the process that I've developed, it is actually faster than me trying to set up the jig out in the garage, and it is less error prone insofar as I get better results overall in a more timely manner than what I had been doing in the past. So what I would like to do is just flip over to Fusion 360, show you the template that I came up with and how to use it with the parametric modeling capabilities of Fusion 360, and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the computer. So here we are in Fusion 360. What you see in front of you is the very simple model that I came up with for my stock cutting board. And as you can see, it is simply just a rectangular cutting board with the juice groove going around the outside. So what I'd like to do here is just dive into some of the sketches that I've made, show you how I've modeled it, and then we'll cut over to the manufacturing workspace and I'll show you the tool paths that back this up and help expedite my workflow. So right off the bat right here on the side, I'm gonna show the first sketch here it is just a base sketch it sets the outside dimensions of the cutting board now in this case it is a rectangle but it could be any dimensions that you want it could be square it could be longer than narrow narrower than longer doesn't really matter as long as you set your parameters which I will show you in just a minute so we'll go ahead and we'll click cancel out of here and we'll jump into the juice groove what you can see here is just a juice groove going around the outside here I have chosen to separate the base from the juice groove so it gives you more configurability of the juice groove itself rather than uh, twiddling with the outside dimensions of the cutting board if you're doing the juice groove. And so you can do what I've done here which is a simple profile cut where you can get a little bit more fancy maybe putting an angle on it or doing a clearing path in a larger surface area. In this case what I have is just a simple profile one inch from the outside of the cutting board all the way around at a specific width which is set by the bit that you're using for this operation. So in this case it is one inch from the outside. You can see right here the center line of the juice groove is one inch from the outside. And then the actual width of the cut here is determined by the size of the bit, which is changed via the parametric capabilities of Fusion 360. So with that, let's just go ahead and show you some of the parameters that I have set up. So you go under modify here, click change parameters, and it'll pull up all the parameters that you have for your specific design here. And so what I've done is I've set a length parameter, which tells you how long the cutting board is. I've set a depth parameter which is how deep the cutting board is or maybe even the width if you want to call it that and then the height parameter which is how tall the cutting board is some other parameters that I have set here is the width of that juice groove again this is dependent upon the bit that you're using uh, the juice groove center how far in from the outside edge that you want that juice groove to be the corner radius uh, the roundness of that juice groove I have found having a nice round juice groove is better than a hard 90 it just looks better and it's a actually a little bit easier to sand. The depth of the juice groove itself and then the fillet of the juice groove. Now the fillet is actually determined by your bit. So if your bit has a rounded edge, uh, you can enter a value here. If it is a score edge for some reason or another, then you can just go ahead and put zero. Once you've set all your parameters here, you can just click OK and it'll recompute everything for you here in the design. And those values will translate over into the manufacturing workspace as well. And so let's go ahead and pivot over to that manufacturing workspace here. And you can see here what I have is I just have a single setup right here with a couple different operations for the CNC tool paths. Now for the actual juice groove itself, I have two separate operations that do essentially the same function but slightly differently and I will talk about the pros and cons of each. So right off the bat here what we have is this engrave function which goes around that center line using the diameter of the bit to create that juice groove. It is done in two operations, one clearing operation and one finishing operation. The idea here is the clearing operation moves a little bit faster, removes a little bit more material, a little bit more aggressively. Then it comes back with that finishing operation to smooth it out and provide that much uh, nicer surface finish than you would get with a roughing operation here like that first op here. Alternatively, rather than using the engrave, you can also use a contour. 
Now the contour is a little bit different because it's not following that center line per se. What it's trying to do is follow the contour of the outside or the inside depending on which one you've selected. The advantage of using the contour in this case is you do get a ramping operation which you don't get with the engrave. With the engrave it's just going to plunge into your material straight and then start cutting. And so because of the plunge there you might get a substandard surface finish potentially right where you plunge in whereas with the ramping is it's going to ease into that material and it's going to take away a little bit at a time so you don't have that abrupt change in that Z height. By way of demonstration I will show the simulation of that contour operation here just by clicking play in the simulate here you can see that it's going around and then it slowly starts plunging into the material around that profile and it just keeps going until it has cleared all the material. Now because it is slowly moving that material it's going to create a slightly better surface finish while it's cutting than the engraving operation however in the end because of that finishing pass that I've done with the engrave the outcome over overall is about the same. Now both of them take about the same amount of time so it's really up to you which one you might want to use if you choose to use this file. Uh, I generally use the engraving operation if I have some simple material that I want to cut into but if there's something more complicated with a lot of variety of hardwoods I like to use the contour path because if you have those various densities of wood the, the straight plunge into the engrave might cause some issues with tear out whereas I found the contour doesn't necessarily give that outcome. Editing Tom breaking in here from the future. So while I was editing the video, it occurred to me that I forgot to mention two really important things about this file. I forgot to show how the parameters carry over from the design space into the manufacturing workspace. And then I also forgot to tell you that I am going to make this file downloadable, available to you if you want to use it to customize your own cutting boards. So let me go ahead very quickly and jump in some of the tool paths and show you the design parameters. So I'm going to start with this contour here it's going to be very straightforward so this is just the contour setup for the fusion 360 here you get to set your feed rate right here on this screen here and if you're not familiar with feed rates and all this other stuff I do encourage you to check out the video series I did on CNC basics I will link that above and down below all right so we have our contour set here to the inside of our juice groove you can also set it at the outside if you want to do that as well it doesn't really matter our heights here are the important part so you can see here the height for how deep we are cutting into the cutting board here we are cutting from the stock top here down 0.25 inches and now it says 0.25 inches but what it is in reality is that depth from the parameter screen now unfortunately for some reason Autodesk took the ability to get your parameters in the manufacturing workspace away for some reason I don't know so let's go back here we'll modify here we'll change the parameters I'm going to change the depth of the juice groove here from uh, 0.25 inches to say let's go with 0.375 inches just like that click OK now you can see here that it actually is deeper in the model itself if we go back to the manufacturer workspace we'll open our contour we'll go to our heights and you can see here that the offset is 0.375 so it is carrying those parameters over however it's not showing you that it's a parameter that is really unfortunate in my opinion uh, but it does carry those over so if you do change any of these sizes all you have to do is change those parameters then go here and say recompute the toolpath here in this case this is a control V or a command V or you can do it here from the menu um, where it says generate like this and it's going to ge regenerate that toolpath and you can see it just generated a whole new toolpath. Now the runtime is going to be a little bit longer because you're cutting a little bit deeper but it does maintain those uh, contours as you would want and so these parameters again apply throughout the entire program that is why it's parametric and that is one of the major advantages in my opinion of Fusion 360 over some of the other programs you might run across like maybe uh, Easel or Carbide Create or even CarveCo or Vetri Aspire or something like this. So all right that's the quick dive into the manufacturing space to show the parameters. If you are enjoying this video please consider giving it a thumbs up. All right back to the main video. All right, we're going to go ahead and exit the simulation here and just cover the last tool path that I offer here, and that is a facing operation. What a facing operation does is it clears the entire surface of the cutting board and makes it flat relative to your CNC. And so this is important. You want to make sure that you have a flat surface for your juice groove, because if you don't, then your juice groove might be a different uh, depth at different places of the cutting board. Generally speaking, if your cutting board isn't too cupped or bowed um, or even twisted for that 
flat matter, you won't notice it visually, but it is definitely good to have a nice flat surface. So I generally flatten the top and the bottom of my cutting board before I begin any operations on the surface. And I found that provides the most optimal results overall. If you're interested in more of these techniques, I did do another video on how to use Fusion 360 to model cutting boards, and I encourage you to watch that right here. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired.